What up, Blockchain Nation? Thank you for taking time to watch this. And uh, let's just get into it. Welcome to 2022. Um, sometime in 2021, I did a video about what I believe were the top 10 jobs in tech. I'll put a link upside um, somewhere up here. And uh, this is kind of like a follow up to that, especially because I just saw a new report, which I think is very fascinating. And I'm going to put a link below so you guys can read it as well. It talks about tech salaries in 2022. And that's just what I'll talk about using this report as a guide. So you can also check out this report yourself, 2022 by Motion Recruitment, the a recruiting company, something I just stumbled upon. So let's just take a look at the tech. The state of tech employment when it comes to compensation, the context of the employment market around us is almost important as the predicted salaries for 2022. Anyways, this is the president of Motion Recruitment the company that put together this report but I'll just go into some parts of this first of all it's important to note what is the immediate impact on salaries with the solution challenges brought up by, on by 2020 and 2021 the IT job market has experienced growth on like other industries which is very phenomenal which is about 4.79 well, over 4.7 million tech jobs in 2021 that has exceeded its all-time peak of 4.7 million from March 2020 before the pandemic hit anyways so only 40% of companies hired tech staff last year, but it says, yeah, in addition to increase, industry increases, many tech workers have seen their salary go further in the remote world. Mavuno up at least, moving to less expensive cities, saving up 24%, 24% of their rent money. Anyways, what this just means is that a lot of things have changed in the tech space. One important aspect was prior to COVID, um, tech companies like uh, looking for talent in San Francisco, which are very high, which is a very high paying city, were restricted to the pool of workers within that loca location. But now, because of the pandemic and COVID, and in 2020, obviously, but you could work from pretty much anywhere. So it increased the pool of um, available workers because everybody was working remote. So tech companies weren't just limited to hiring in a particular city they had a larger pool of developers to hire from. And also, the developers who were living in those cities didn't have to necessarily live in those cities. They could live elsewhere, which means they could get more bang for their buck, which is very, very fascinating and very exciting. And it changed the perspective of a lot of people. Also, to add to that, a lot of people are now, this is now the startup space. A lot of people are starting their own companies. A lot of people are trying out their own businesses. And that does mean that there's a larger demand for software, harder demand for uh, developers, you know. So, it is definitely very, 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 very exciting time to be a tech, be into tech. So, the fastest growing salaries by occupation, cybersecurity analyst is up 16%, data scientist, DevOps engineer, and the next. Cybersecurity is very key. When I did that video about the top 10 jobs in 2021, one thing I, did, I didn't mention was cybersecurity. And cybersecurity is obviously huge because of things that happen like the data wins hack and a lot of things. So, cybersecurity is definitely a huge space to get involved in. So. We won't go into all this anyway. Cobalt total compensation conditions <coughs> to attract people. We're obviously, signing bonuses and all this is more targeted towards um, employers, people who are looking to employ. And, and this is motion recruitment. Whoever put the team that put together this report, and they are obviously a recruiting company. And so there's some things here that are very important to if you are in that space or you're looking to hire staff. But uh, what I want to focus on is for people who are. I'm looking for tech roles to get into and what the salaries might be for those tech roles based on this report of course talks about the future of work and there's an escapable evolution of the hybrid space so what this now means is that more employers are not stuck in nobody's stuck in an office anymore or wants to be stuck in an office anymore 75 percent of workers prefer working at least one day a week from home um, some say two days once it's considered safe and despite enjoying the benefits of remote work two out of every three remote employees see the benefits of in-person interactions to help further their careers which is good anyways so employers have to be flexible trust their employees out of sight does not mean out of mind and build a sustainable remote culture anyway enough to of employers let's talk about them employees you know this is important stuff total unemployment has increased but tech unemployment hasn't increased that much in comparison to total employment so is a good, 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 good report to look at and definitely want to look at most of this stuff. But let's go into the meat and potatoes of this and why you are here. And let's talk about tech compensation. Tech salary ranges, which is the most important thing. I like this report. I think it's very extensive. I think so. So tech salary ranges, whether you're a um, software developer, you're the product person on UX, you are doing um, mobile, or you're a QA person, you have data infrastructure and cybersecurity. First of all, let's look at the variances by, uh, in terms of the state from state to state and as well as the kind of role you're looking for. And just to have worth knowing, a senior data scientist can make low range, somewhere 
above $127,000 a year. This is obviously US, living in the United States. High range, $165,000. New range, uh, San Francisco, high range of $236,000. San Francisco is a very expensive city, which is why this is highlighted. Salaries are pretty much remain the same in San Francisco, even though you can get a job. Uh, your company can be based in San Francisco, but with COVID, um, depending on how things change, you can live in some cases elsewhere, although some companies would slash your pay if you're living in San Francisco, like uh, I think that's what Facebook is saying. All right, top priorities when considering US company, consumer benefits, work life balance, open and effective management, software development. Here's the meat and potatoes of salary ranges, which is very attractive. Mid level, senior level. So, .NET Architect. Uh, on the low range, 94,000 a year, high is 124. If you're a senior level developer, on the low range, 128,000, high is 158,000. So you look at different skill sets. Whether a Python developer, this is the high range, is 159,000. Among recruiting and hiring leaders, the shortage of Python developers comes up regularly, with a lower barrier to entry than other languages, and it is still leading to a number of career tracks. Investing time in learning Python can pay off in dividends. I think that's interesting. I definitely think so. So they are Ruby on Rails, Scala is down here, Ruby developer is somewhere. Node.js is up here if you're Node, and microservices, engineer, and rest. So let's see, programming languages. Programming, scripting, and markup languages developers want most to work with going into 2022, according to this report, of course. Python is up 19%, TypeScript, JavaScript, Dart, and the most, most derived, desired, and tested tech stacks in Java and .NET, what are you using? So like how, you, if you're a Ruby developer, you use Rails. If you're a Django developer, you can use different, if you're a Python developer, use different web frameworks like Django. What are you a front-end developer, a full-stack developer? So as a front-end developer, if you're an Angular, Angular's, as a mid-level developer, on the low is 84,000, high is 114,000. React seems to be more popular. React is uh, low on 90,000, high is 120,000. So according to this report, I mean, if you want to do it front end, nothing say you can't pick the tech stack you want, but it looks like it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I won't say necessarily use a tech stack just because it pays more. You might not like that tech stack, but if you have the uh, desire to do front end development and you can learn React, I think it makes sense in terms of conversation because that's why you're learning stuff. You want to work and make more money, in my opinion. General, we have full stack software engineer, we have gaming, robotics, sales, sales force developer, solutions architect, and an embedded engineer. The list goes on and on and on and on and on. As you can see, sales force seems to make sense if that's your thing. And lastly, most commonly used web frameworks. We have React, which is here. As you can see, React developers get paid an interesting amount right here, as high as 156,000, and it's the most commonly used web framework. So I think it makes sense to learn that jQuery is there, Express, Angular, Express is more of a node framework. Ruby on Rails is always down here. I learned Ruby in um, Bootcamp, but I'm leaning more towards uh, Django lately. Top 10 tech skills most needed in job postings. Project management, SQL, 9%. This is a change. All right, so if you're a product person, a product developer, if you're a graphic designer, product designer, product manager, UI developer, this is the ranges, this is the low, which is very attractive. So even if you're not a coder, you don't want to learn how to code, and you just want to focus on UX design, this is good. You still make a very fantastic, phenomenal salary doing this, which is great. 50 percent of UI UX professionals globally got slightly raised in 2021. And that's cool because everybody, not everyone, a lot of people are going into this startup space. So you need a UX person if you want to come up with a framework or with a flow of what your new project will look like before you even take it to a coder. Software quality assurance analysts and testers. We have Q&A, build and release engineer, which is very big. It's going to make uh, 91,000 on the mid-level, and uh, which is low, and 106,000 on the high. You have Android developers, which make interesting amount. Look at this, all the way outside, $170,000. And most, uh, ha most have skills for mobile developers is React Native. So if you're a React developer, you can do React. You can do React for web. You can also do React for mobile through React Native. And the top six certifications for product development, if that's your thing, Scrum, PMP, Certified Manager, and the likes. So top four skill, skills needed in organizations. You have artificial intelligence, business analytics, data analytics, and machine learning. And this is focusing on if you decide to go into big data or big data analytics. You have AI engineering, and the list goes on and on. So this is definitely a good report. And lastly, if infrastructure is your thing, like cloud computing, you could be a cloud architect, a cloud developer, and you can see the salary ranges for these as well. So human aspects, Increased by process and frameworks, 55%, human aspects, 
And it goes on Kubernetes, NetOps, Linux, systems administration, higher speed tools to know. It stores a stack overflow, Terraform, Chef, Puppet, Kubernetes, Chef, Puppet, more for CI CD, uh, continuous integration and continuous development. Kubernetes is good to know, Ansible, and the list goes on and on. Cybersecurity, it pays very well, also at 168,000. And uh, adding value with certifications, you can do CISM, CISA, CISP. It's, it's 7% of IT professionals have at least one certification. So going beyond your higher learning education is becoming a necessity. One thing I didn't see about this report though, is anything to do with blockchain development, maybe, uh, you know, I don't know why that, this, does, this doesn't have that, but uh, maybe there's not enough information out there about that, I don't know. Anyway, so what's the conclusion? In tech, it's a very, very broad space, and I have fallen into this trap before. Once you go into tech, and you want to learn every single thing. You'll be like, hey, React pays more, or you're yeah, motivated by pay, you're motivated by the new flashy framework. Honestly, in my opinion, and this what has worked for me, is just to pick something and stick to it. And then as you evolve, you can learn other things as well. For example, I'm a, I love blockchain technology, and you guys know I'm a certified blockchain developer, but at the same time, I do um, have experience with cloud computing and AWS. And um, also, I would like to learn more about machine learning and AI, because I think that's a very attractive space. Not to become an AI developer, but just to know it at a high level, understand artificial neural networks, understand how to use platforms like Terraform, and just have an understanding. Um, yeah, but my major goal is to focus a lot in blockchain technology. But these are, there are different skills I built, I've built along the way, you know, like web application development. And um, yeah, so for me, I would suggest find something that you really want to do, and then follow a path in that direction. You can pick up all those skills. Uh, you can pick up how to work around a Unix system, how to write uh, short scripts, how maybe um, DevOps might be something that I've also picked up along the way. But uh, my core has always been one direction to follow any path. So it makes sense to pick something and stick to it. And then you can pick and do up other skills and try things along the way. But have the focus of where you're going to. What happens to a lot of us is that we try so many things. We only do this, only learn this, only learn that, and end up learning nothing. So it makes a lot of sense to go into tech, especially in 2022. Not just looking at this report, but just generally looking at what's going on in the tech space. I mean, it's exploding. I always like to quote Andreessen Horowitz, who says that software is eating up the world. So it definitely makes sense to get involved in tech. And you don't have to be a programmer, as you can see. You can get paid a lot doing UI UX, doing DevOps, and doing some other, um, being in some other areas of tech. So it makes absolute sense to get involved in my personal opinion. So, till next time, my wish for you is that you learn how to code. Because coding is changing and will change the world. Whether it's through um, data analytics, whether it's through web applications, mobile applications, whether it's data science, uh, whether it's through AI and machine learning, and of course my first personal favorite, blockchain technology. I believe that uh, those who get involved early in any of these areas will greatly impact the future. And if that is you, let's go change the world. If you would like to create more awareness for your brand or content, or you would like to earn additional income, register now on www.cleekey.com. The more you share, the more you earn. Cleekey.